Let's look at how artists and creators benefit from copyright and how copyright encourages and rewards speech and creativity. Because of copyright, creators get some control over their work. Often, it's economic control, like they get to decide where their work will be sold and for how much. This helps them earn money from their creative work. Sometimes, artists are more focused on artistic control, so their creations stay true to their vision. Either way, guaranteeing that control gives artists incentives to produce more work. Take, for example, these guys. Dude Perfect got its start on YouTube doing trick shot videos that went viral. Now they have a huge online following and make money from ad revenue. Nice! Their viral videos also gave them new opportunities to collaborate with famous sports personalities. And it keeps going. One of the dudes, Corey Cotton, wrote a book, Go Big, that shares the secrets of building a business through social media. Copyright creates a marketplace for creators and artists, like this. So, the Dude Perfect guys chose to make their videos free and available to everyone, but they still own them with copyright. And other people don't get to copy their videos and put them up online anywhere they want, right? Right. This control over their videos made it possible for them to gather a large online following, which in turn provided more opportunity for creative work, like the book deal and TV appearances. Here's another example of copyright at work. In 2014, Taylor Swift decided to take her music down from Spotify. Some people weren't happy. She did several interviews about her decision. In an interview with Time Magazine, she said, I tried it and I didn't like the way it felt. I think there should be an inherent value placed on art. I didn't see that happening perception-wise when I put my music on Spotify. With Beats Music and Rhapsody, you have to pay for a premium package to access my albums. And that places the perception of value on what I've created. I just don't agree with perpetuating the perception that music has no value and should be free. Also, a lot of people were suggesting to me that I try putting new music on Spotify. I felt like I was saying to my fans, if you create music someday, if you create a painting someday, someone can just walk into a museum, take it off the wall, and it's theirs now, and they don't have to pay for it. I didn't like the perception. Copyright makes that her choice. She gets to decide who distributes her music, and she didn't like how Spotify was doing it. Okay, here's a completely different example. Wu-Tang Clan did something really crazy. They released an album edition of one. What? What do you mean, one? I mean, only one copy. The plan was to have it play in only museums, and the only way to hear it would be to tour the museum. Wu's Rizza said, The idea that music is art has been something we advocated for years, and yet it doesn't receive the same treatment as art especially nowadays, when it's been devalued and diminished to almost the point that it's been given away for free. In the end, Wu-Tang decided to sell it to a private collector for $2 million, with the agreement that it cannot be exploited for money for 88 years. Weird, huh? For Wu-Tang Clan, part of the art was its presentation as a collector's item. Copyright makes that an option for them. They have the right to decide how their music is distributed, even if it's crazy. Well, that's fine for the Wu-Tang Clan, but I don't see anyone else doing that. Right. Most bands wouldn't want to do anything like this. But copyright gives them the control they need to experiment with creative ways to release and profit from their work. Someday, you might be a recording artist with music of your own to share. Maybe on YouTube or Spotify. Or maybe not. Maybe you'll have your own ideas for how you want to release your music. Copyright means you have the choice.